Hey guys, Luke here, and I'm here to talk about the Brisbane Broncos. Now, as of late, I've been talking about the Bulldogs a lot, and I think with the Bulldogs, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of just look at the team, and you can see the problems with the Bulldogs. They've just sacked their coach, uh, haven't made a few new signings, so it's not that bad. But with the Broncos, I feel like it's similar. There's a few similarities, but I feel like the whole situation uh, as a whole is quite different. Now, for the Broncos, they've never really had any down periods. I think they've had a lot of success over the years, um, and I think this is probably the worst run they've had. I don't recall them having a wooden spoon. I'm pretty certain they've never won a wooden spoon. And here they find themselves in the running to actually win uh, the wooden spoon. But the difference is between them and the Bulldogs is you look at the Broncos roster, and it's a pretty good roster. Um, they've got pretty good players. Anthony Milford, fantastic player. Well, we know he's capable of being fantastic. Um, Payne Haas, really, really good. David Fafita, just signed with the Titans. We know he's very, very good. Um, they still have a lot of other good players there as well. Now, I know they've got a lot of injuries, um, and they're also playing, uh, paying overs for a lot of payers, players probably, so the salary cap isn't exactly balanced. And also, they've got a very, very young team. So, um, you know, they are going to get a little bit of inconsistency, but at the same time, this team should not be going as bad as what they are. This is not the same as the Bulldogs. The Broncos definitely have enough talent to be at least competing for the eight. Now, we saw at the start of the season, they had two pretty good weeks to start the year, and then obviously the COVID stuff happened, rule changes happened, but I just, there's got to be something more to it. Uh, obviously, there is more more to it, but they started the season phenomenally. I think they beat the Cowboys. I think they beat the Storm the next week. They beat someone the next week pretty convincingly, and I'll say again, oh, shit, the Broncos are the real deal this year. I think Brody Croft was playing pretty good. Milford was good. I think Turpin was at hooker. I think they had a Sarko still at fullback. Now, at the moment, they, they can't even field a consistent side. They don't know who's their best team. Um, that one week, Milford's at the back. The next week, he's in the halves. The next week, Darius Boyd's there. Darius Boyd's in the centers. He's on the wing. I really don't know what's going on with the Broncos. Actually, the only thing I do think I know what's going on with the Broncos is the fact that I don't think Anthony Seabold is that good of a coach. Now, he had one good season with the Rabbitohs. He had a very, very good squad. He got them to the preliminary finals, I think, uh, which I think they might have made it the year before anyways. So... He's taken over a pretty good roster. I got them to the prelims, or he got them somewhere in the finals, and then he's just jumped ship to Brisbane immediately after that. So it's not like he had a few years of success and then went there. He literally had one season with a really, really good roster. He's gone to the Broncos, not as good roster, um, a lot of youngsters, and I think it's been proven that he's not the one. Now, everyone, or I say everyone, a lot of the media and stuff, they really shit on Wayne Bennett. They said they didn't want him. Wayne Bennett has then gone to Seabold's old team and done exactly the same as what Seabold's done. Got them to some pretty respectable finishes. So it sort of remains to be um, seen whether dumping Wayne Bennett was the wrong thing. I mean, at the moment, it definitely seems like it. Whether Bennett was on his last legs anyway, I think, um, in terms of at the Broncos and probably as a coach, I don't know if he'll keep coaching after he's done at the Rabbitohs, but Anthony Seabold, definitely not the man. Definitely this big long-term deal where they were saying Seabold's the saviour, it just hasn't worked out that way. I mean, the Broncos are already on the slide with Bennett. Now they've brought in uh, basically an unproven coach and are now going, huh, why is it not working out? Uh, I feel like the Broncos board has really, really um, shafted the fans, essentially. Uh, the Broncos always, always strong, like I've said. They've never won a wooden spoon as far as I can remember. Um, just always in the months to eight, uh, if not the top four, always have a very, very strong side. And you go through that side, and there's there's not too many uh, star players. And you think of players that have left them over the last few years. I mean, Ben Hunt left, Josh McGuire's left. A, a lot of leadership has left, plus all the players who have retired. And their replacements are like 18, 19-year-old kids. All you need to know about the Broncos is the fact that Brody Croft is part of their captain's group, whatever. I think he's, he's their co-captain with, I think it was Carrigan. And the fact that I'm saying, I think it's Carrigan, I think that's his name. Like, he's, they've literally got nobodies as their captain. And for the Broncos, that, that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Broncos usually have some of the most star-studded teams, and they do have some stars in the team. And the fact that none of them are captains, it's just, it, it baffles me. It really baffles me. Brody Croft couldn't even get a run at the Storm. Like the Storm, they play Riley Jack. Like this is the same Storm who used to play Ben Roberts in the halves. And and Brady Croft can't even get a run there. I think that says it all. Um, we've seen how other halves have fared when they've left the Storm. I think the only one I can sort of recall who's been half decent was Blake Green. And he'd already made a name for himself overseas uh, before he went to the Storm. So it's not like Storm just unearthed him. They definitely did help him. But um, yeah, he definitely was, I wouldn't say he was made at the Storm. He definitely helped though. Um, but he's the only one who's gone on from the storm and actually looked pretty decent. Um, and he was also kind of older and experienced at that point. 
I mean, look at other ones. Like I said, Riley Jacks, now Brody Croft. Uh, it's it's not really worked out that well. Even guys like Drinkwater, who were in the halves. I mean, he's not exactly been a superstar at um, the Cowboys. I know it's very early on. He has looked pretty good, but uh, the Storm, people look at the Storm, they say, yep, fantastic players. But time and time again, it's been proven that the Storm can take these nobodies and have them playing above sort of what you think their ability is. And then as soon as another team goes, oh, yeah, that guy's pretty good, throw big money at him, they go away, and then they get found out. It just I don't know whether it's um, Craig Bellamy, I don't know whether it's Cameron Smith, but at the end of the day, the Storm definitely make players a lot better than what they are. And the fact that Brody Croft couldn't even cut it there, I think it says it all. And also, I had my doubts when they first signed him. I think Broncos fans had their doubts, to be honest with you, but it just shows how desperate the Broncos were. And at the same time, I was like, you're throwing big money at Brody Croft, who's fairly young, and you're trying, you're sort of banking on potential when you've already got guys like Troy Dearden there, who's even younger and probably shown as much as Brody Croft in first grade. Uh, just at least, at least give them a go. Like you're giving the rest of the team, the rest of the team are youngsters, so why not give him a go as well? It, it didn't make any sense to me, and it seemed like sort of the last roll of the dice because they you know, haven't really replaced Ben Hunt. But I feel like the final nail in the coffin for Seabold uh, lately is the fact that they've just lost David Fafita. Uh, apart from Payne Haas, I'll say Payne Haas, I think he's way better than David Fafita, but in terms of second rowers, David Fafita is the best young second rower in the comp at the moment. Um, he's even probably one of the better second rowers just in general, um, not even in terms of potential on that. And they've lost him to the Titans. So it's not only have they lost him, they've lost him to somewhat of a rival. Now, I know that was kind of laughed at um, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, if the Titans being a rival, but hey, where their ladder is at the moment, Titans are definitely a rival. And I mean, David Fafita hasn't even played that much first grade, so it is a risk by the Titans, but I feel like it's a risk that will pay off. I feel like it will kind of be similar to, I don't know, maybe similar to like Ponga. You know the talent's there, you know he's going to be good, and you're giving him a first grade opportunity. Well, I mean, Ponga needed the first grade opportunity, Fafita already is there, but uh, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, you know, he's being given big money. And they're sort of banking on him becoming that superstar that we probably feel like he will be. But you never know, injuries and that. So maybe Broncos will be laughing in a couple of years. However, I feel like it sort of, I don't know, reflects more on the Broncos. Not the fact that they lost him, but the fact that they tried to lowball him and were just banking on the Broncos' name to get them home in the end there. And for feeders, seeing the Titans offer, and he's went, nah, money, I'm taking the money. Um... So Broncos, are they losing that star power? It kind of seems like it. And there's talk that Jack Bird's going to be leaving. Uh, I think he was being a, a big flop just due to injuries. Now, I think if he was fit, might have been a different story. He actually looked pretty good um, the last time he was on the field. But, uh, I mean, injuries happened. But, yeah, he hasn't been a good signing. And even when they signed, the Broncos went through that period of signing players just for the sake of it, not for whether they actually fit into their side. Like, it was a few years ago, Broncos had, like, 70,000 fullbacks. Then they were signing Jack Bird. Jack Bird didn't even know his best position, but I think they already had centers. They had fullback. He wanted to play fullback, but they already had fullbacks. Derek Spoy was there. Sarko had a few others in the halves. They were pretty sorted. Um, just hasn't worked out. And then the fact they let go of Cody Nikaruma last year, um, just mid-season. I know it's through the Warriors. Warriors probably paid a pretty good contract for him. But they had no replacement. They didn't have anyone to fill in there. So it's like you're letting go uh, of Cody Nikarima without any real replacement. I know they were trying out play players and Nikarima found himself on the bench in that. But you can't really tell them they had anyone better at the time than Nikarima. They may as well just kept him for the rest of the season. It seemed weird that for a mid-season signing, they would let him go. doesn't seem very Broncos-like. They Usually, if they want to play, they keep him, but it doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And that's never been more evident than the whole David Fafita situation. Now, what do the Broncos need to do to get back on track? I don't know. It looks like they're not going to sack Seabol, but they they have said that he needs to pick up... I, th I think it's... I was going to say points-wise. I think he needs to win the next five out of his 10 games. Something along the lines of that uh, definitely has not started that well, that's for sure. Look, Seabol's got to go. Even after this, uh, I mean, there's all the reports going around now that Fafita didn't want to play for Seabold. Just look at the effort levels of the Broncos team as a whole. Either the whole team's lazy, but we've seen in the past, they definitely have the potential to do some damage. We saw the start of the season, they're doing some damage. But right now, it definitely does not look like they're playing for the coach. And when Dean Pay got sacked a few weeks ago, I was kind of sensing the same thing. Um, you know, the effort levels weren't total shit, but they weren't trying as hard as what they could. And we've seen the last few weeks, the Bulldogs, the, the talent, talent's probably not there compared to other NRL teams, but the effort is, and they're compensating for that. And they picked up the win against the Knights, a pretty solid win there. 
where Broncos, it's just, you look at them and you go, holy wow, that was a terrible attempt at tackle. Oh, what, he's not even trying there. What's he doing? We've seen Darius Boyd just literally fall over and throw his hands up um, multiple times. And now they've just shifted him back to fullback. Seems like the narrative uh, from Channel 9 and all that is Darius Boyd definitely needs to go to fullback. Darius Boyd, he's retiring. He definitely needs to go. He just needs to go in general. Uh, I feel like the Broncos need to be clear out. But at the same time, I mean, the, the cap, I'm not sure what their salary cap is like. So, And also, the, there's not that many superstars or anything on the market. So Broncos, uh, doesn't look like they're going to be making any big signings. Ben Teo is probably the biggest signing they could have made. And they've, they've got him. He'll probably be solid. He'll probably be okay. But once again, they're in the second row. I feel like they're, they're okay in the second row. Um, it's in the halves and the backs that I think they're really struggling. They just need to find a fullback, and they need to get fit. Like, they've let McAuliffe go to the Knights, but he's kind of only on a, a loan, sort of. I, don't, I think he's, I don't know. I don't know exactly how it is, but he's got an option at the Broncos for next year for, like, 600000 That is crazy money for McAuliffe, even when McAuliffe's been in form. Also, you add in the fact um, that when Andrew McAuliffe was playing for the Broncos the last few years, I was looking at him, I was like, Phew. He is done. He looks like shit. He can't do anything. He, he's terrible. No attack, no this and that. And then he went to the Knights, and he actually looked really, really good. Uh, he looked like that experienced hooker that he is. So it just makes you question um, the playing ability of the Broncos. Like, if Anthony Wilford left right now, if you chuck him in another NRL team, does he take it to superstar status or superstar level? Possibly. Possibly. Andrew McCullough played out of his skin at the Knights. Would other players do the same? Possibly. I mean, they probably haven't been coached great the last few years. The amount of uh, positional changes they've had, it's been ridiculous. Now, I, I kind of feel bad for some of the Broncos players. Some of them I don't. I mean, look, you, you, there's only so much the coach can do at the same time. Um, if players aren't putting in, it kind of does reflect on them as well. I mean, they're the ones out there in the field. They're not the, uh, like, the coach isn't the one dropping the balls and um, doing all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I feel like Seabold's um, team selection and sort of rotations and Probably tactics are just not up to first grade standard. And I feel like he's probably uh, still living off that one decent season at the Rabbitohs. And I say decent season, like, it's not like he won a premiership or anything. He literally had a half decent season. Um, just made it to the same place uh, when Bennett got the Rabbitohs to the next season and ended up signing this big rich contract with the Broncos. And I feel like that's, that's the biggest problem with the Broncos at the moment. The coach and the fact that they don't want to pay him out to get rid of him because they've paid him so much money over so many years and also just on the market like who do you bring in there's not too many um star coaches on the market unless you're going to poach someone which they already tried they did poach Seabold from the rubber there's no two ways about it Seabold had another year in his contract and they negotiated they kind of did the dodgy there so <laughs> in some sense I'm, I'm kind of happy it hasn't worked out it's kind of like sucked into the Broncos you were kind of dodgy about it and you know it hasn't worked out but it definitely is weird to see the Broncos as low as what they are and I honestly can't see it getting too much better next year. Um, if Seabell goes, which I'm assuming he probably will, they have to get a suitable replacement, um, and they'll probably just throw someone in, uh, you know, probably like Kevin Moulders or something. Like, he's proven at origin, or even, even then. Like, they haven't really won too much with the team they've had. And then chuck them in, and then next minute, they'll lose a few games, and the media will be all over him too. So, I don't know. The Broncos, it's, it's a high-pressure job. I don't know how many rookie coaches would want to take on it. Well, obviously, they'll take on it. Uh, but at the same time, like, if you're looking... If you're another coach in an NRL team, you look at that Broncos um, team as a whole. It's just a shambles at the moment. So why would you want to go there? And why would players want, would want to sign for them? I mean, they just had David Hafita there. They low the hell out of him compared to what the Titans were offering. And then last minute, they go and match the offer. So it's like, okay, you had the money there, but... I don't know. Not a good look for the Broncos. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the Broncos. Leave in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on the Broncos? Who should they sign? What are the problems with the Broncos? Is it the coach? Is it the players? Let me know. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're around here. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's on the screen at right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT. The Facebook page is also in the description below as well. Also on the screen, it's just Mr. Luke. Search it up. And yeah, that's where I'm going to end the video. Right guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. See you guys.